clearances are determined by a variety of sources. The first one is the manufacturer themselves. The manufacturer is going to put the stove through a series of strict tests that allow them to determine exactly how close the stove can get to a surface without it tipping those surfaces over uh, a critical point in which combustion is possible. It's important to note that those tests are very strict as far as their results are concerned. There really is no leeway. Um, I've been asked, I used to do those tests, I've been asked, hey, you know, is there a little bit of wiggle room when we come to installations that are just slightly questionable? The answer is really no. It's pass-fail. Anything from the clearance that we've determined above is safe. Everything from the clearance that we've determined below um, is absolutely not safe. It's also important to note that we're testing for combustible clearances. One thing that we can't test for, for instance, is meltables. I've occasionally had people come back after a new installation and complain that a candles on the wall or on the mantelpiece or something like that had melted. Um, possibly even plastics have distorted. And we have to point out that we really can't address every single surface. So when you look at combustible surfaces around the stove, it's also important to take a little bit of a look at anything that might possibly melt as a result of its exposure. The other way that we look at clearances is by default codes. Sometimes we always have to default to the local uh, authority. They may have some stricter requirements based on local experience, for instance. So it's always good to check with local authorities uh, for the final answer on an installation, especially if the installation has to be approved for insurance reasons or other. The NFPA PA 211, which is the National Fire Prevention Association um, code book. And through that, they've tested a series of requirements for installations, as well as default requirements in the absence of existing codes. Default clearances are what we fall into when we don't have anything provided by the manufacturer. If a stove has been tested and listed, it will have what's called a rating plate on it. It's a metal plate that's attached to the back of the stove, sometimes it's attached to the bottom of the stove by a chain. If the stove is present on that, if, sorry, if the plate is present on that stove, then it means it is a listed appliance. If it is not present, then it is an unlisted appliance and we have to default to the basic NFPA 211 or local default codes. Um, NFPA 211 default, while this stove can be about six inches away from the wall based on the construction um, as is and how it was tested, if this was a default, it would have to be about three feet away from the wall because that's the only thing that they can uh, use as a reference. There's always a minimum requirement underneath a wood stove, and that's 16 inches in front of the stove. Um, in some places it's 18 inches, but 16 inches is generally the default. And when we measure, we measure from the glass. There are two types of hearth protection that can go underneath the stove. One is um, ember protection, and the other is thermal protection. These will be determined by the manufacturer, and it's based on exactly how much heat is driven down underneath the stove. Sometimes taller stoves are high enough off that it actually doesn't push too much heat underneath. Ember protection can be as simple as stone, tile, um, a piece of sheet metal that meets the minimum requirements underneath the stove. Thermal protection, which is becoming more and more common these days because of the greater the efficiency of the stove and the more heat that's being driven underneath it, has an insular value to it. The manufacturer may specify the what they call the K or the R value of that. Usually that's with very efficient stoves or with masonry stoves like uh, hearthstone, uh, soapstone stoves that throw so much heat down that they actually need very aggressive thermal protection. Most stoves will use anything from a basic thermal protection like this right here. This is a pebble grain board you can buy at most, uh, at most uh, stove shops or hardware stores. And underneath it, it has an insular material called homosote that's a very good insula insular. When we're looking at adjacent materials, of course, we want to look at walls around the stove. We also want to look at things like shelving, where's the wood stored. Everything that's combustible falls into that clearance requirement. So if they say it has to be, uh, whether it's 10 inches away from the stove or whether it's three feet away from the stove, they mean everything that's potentially combustible. The next thing that we want to take a look at when we're talking about clearances is, of course, the ceiling. There are actual height requirements based on certain stoves. A lot of radiant heat stoves are pushing so much heat up in addition to all the heat that the height of the ceiling can become a factor.
the standard default clearance for single wall pipe off of a stove, this is what we call connector pipe, is 18 inches and that has to be adhered to. The only variable for that is if we use shields on the pipe or shields on the wall which are addressed within the NFPA 211 code as well as the owner's manuals for the appliance. The clearance of the support boxes. If you have a support box that's coming through the ceiling, we want to make sure that we've addressed all materials around it. This is an interesting installation because we have sort of a jog in the road, in the ceiling here. The minimum clearance here is two inches to the ceiling on the box. So from the edge of the box up to here it has to be two inches. Because of the shape of this ceiling, we had to use this as our default. This is what we consider our ceiling as part of the installation. So with clearances, we need to address where is the heat going. With older, less efficient stoves, most of the heat was going up. It was all radiating off the top of the stove and mostly off of the pipe. With newer stoves, we have a whole different situation. The stoves are, by nature, they're being more efficient. They're pushing more of the heat into the room right off of the stove itself. So now we have to worry about uh, the walls around the stove. We have to worry about materials that are stored near the stove, furniture. And most importantly, the floor. The biggest difference between old and new stoves is the heat that's driven down. Um, it's become much more important to have proper hearth protection underneath the stove.